Today we'd like to talk about rotational equilibrium. So what makes a system rotationally balanced? So here I have a baseball and a 200 gram mass and I place them in just the right spot that when I let go, the system will come back to equilibrium. No matter which way I tilt it, it'll eventually level itself out. So what makes a system self-leveling like that? What makes this system balanced? Well, it turns out that it all has to do with torque. So if you take a look, we've got a mass on this side that is creating a clockwise torque. We have a mass on this side that's creating a counterclockwise torque. If those two torques are equal, the net torque would be zero. The system would be balanced. Okay, so how do we actually figure this out? So you start with your pivot point. You measure the radius to object one, we'll call that R1. We get the mass of object one. Then we calculate the force of gravity on object one, which would be the mass times the gravitational field. We do the same thing for object two. We measure the distance. We measure the mass. We calculate the force of gravity. And again, the masses don't have to be the same. The distances don't have to be the same. The torques have to be the same. So then we find the torque on this side by doing radius one times force gravity one. That would be radius one times mass one times the gravitational field when we plug in for gravity. Then for object two, it would be radius two times force gravity two, radius two, mass two, gravitational field. Okay, we set those two equal to each other if it's balanced. So we would have radius two, mass two, gravity equals radius one, mass one, gravity. Now you'll notice something very important. We've got the gravitational field on both sides so they can cancel out. It turns out that if this system is balanced on Earth, it would also be balanced on the moon. That is, the less gravity on the moon would be pulling equal on both sides. So it doesn't matter what the gravitational field is, the balancing locations are the same regardless. The other important thing about this is because we have a radius on each side and a mass on each side, it does not matter if we are in traditional units or not. We could work mass one in grams, so long as mass two is in grams. There's no need to convert them to kilograms because you're gonna be doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. So a lot of times it's easiest to work in centimeters and grams instead of meters and kilograms. Realize the only reason you're allowed to do this is because the radius and mass are present on both sides of the equation. Okay, so some real quick ones. Just look at them and say, is the system balanced? Will it rotate clockwise or will it go counterclockwise? This is number one. Jot these down on your notes, just on a uh, part off to the side, see how you do. Number two. Number three, number four, number five, and number six. Okay, so let's go back and see how you did. So the first one you should have gotten is balance. This one's super easy. You look at your pivot point of 50. It is 20 centimeters in either direction. So we have the same distance and the same mass on each side, so that is perfectly balanced. On this one, I hope you picked that it would go clockwise. This one is at a greater distance, so it's going to create a greater torque. They are both the same mass, so all we have to worry about is distance. With this one, we can see that they are at the same distance, 20 centimeters from the pivot point. 
So now mass dominates, and this one should rotate counterclockwise. This one should be balanced, so watch, this one's a little tricky. We are 20 centimeters, we are 40 centimeters. Because it's twice as far, you would think it would have twice the torque, but it also has half the mass. So the fact that one is double the distance and the other side is double the mass, they cancel out. If you don't see this, you test it. 20 times 100 on the one side, 40 times 50 on the other. Are they actually equal? Yes, they are. So this is balanced. Okay, this one, hopefully you pick clockwise. We have a bigger mass and a bigger radius, both trying to make it go clockwise. So clockwise is definitely going to win. This is another one where it balances out. This time we have a distance of 10 and a distance of 20. So this one is half the distance, but twice the mass. So again, this should be a balanced system. Now I'd like you to try placing this somewhere on the meter stick. So tell me what number I would put this on on the meter stick to balance it out. Here's number one, number two. Okay, where are we gonna put these things? Okay, so hopefully you saw that this was a distance of 40. This is twice the mass, so it should be half the distance. So it should be 20 away, which means we put it on the 70. This time, it's five times the mass. So since this is 40, we wanna go five times less distance. So 40 divided by five is eight. So you want this eight centimeters away. We want to place it right on the 58. The center of that mass should be right at 58. Okay, let's do something a little bit more challenging. Let's see if we can figure out the mass of the baseball on our balance system. So can you take a second to draw this out? Show your pivot point, put the baseball, this guy is 200 grams, and we're trying to figure out the mass of the ball. Okay, so um, the 200 gram mass is placed at about 15.89 centimeter mark. And this guy is placed around the 22.2 centimeter mark. Okay, so on this side, we would do the torque. Radius times force equals the torque. Radius times force. We use our simplified formula where we had radius one, mass one, equals radius two, mass two. So plug in 15.2. 8.9, plug in 200. Plug in the 22.2 for your radius and solve for the mass of the ball. To see if you're right, I know a baseball should be somewhere between 140 and 150 grams. So hopefully you get something similar to that. Okay, I have one more for, for you to try. So we got the Pillsbury Doughboy on one side of the meter stick. We've got a 500 gram mass on the other. Pivot point is exactly at 50. This is 20 centimeters. Okay, this clamp is 23 grams and the mass is 500. So make sure you add those two together. The Doughboy's mass, we do not know, but he is placed 10, 20, 30, 34, about 34.5 centimeters away. All right, so do your math and work out the mass of the Doughboy.
All right, well, hopefully you understand a little bit about rotational equilibrium. Rotational equilibrium is when you have an object that will return itself to level. That is, it will remain balanced if we let go of it, if it's already balanced. And if it's not balanced, it will torque itself back to the right position. All right? So what makes it rotational equilibrium is that the torque counterclockwise equals the torque clockwise.